Okay, pH and soils. What does this stand for? pH parts hydrogen or percentage hydrogen. That's what it stands for. And the pH is really determined to a greater extent by the parent rocks of a soil and whether they're acid or alkaline pH in their original source. Now, pH is a scale. It's a logarithmic scale with the number seven in the middle. That's neutral. So number seven is neutral. It's a funny scale. And it goes out six, five, four, three, two, one. And out in the other direction, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is acid, actually sulfuric acid at this end. And this is alkaline. And this is caustic soda at this end. And this is neutral right in the middle. But what is unusual about the pH scale is being logarithmic, this is 10 times more acid, 100 times more acid, 1,000 times more acid, 10,000 times more acid, 100,000 times more acid, and 1 million times more acid. And it goes in the opposite direction, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, and 1 million times more alkaline out at this end. So it's a logarithmic scale. It's to the power of 10. It's not a little bit more alkaline or not a little bit more acid. And as we go out, it gets more and more erosive, corrosive. Out here at 4.5 heavy metals dissolve. This is where we've got to watch our heavy metals like lead. As long as we can keep our pH close to neutral, we don't have to worry about heavy metals being water soluble. Plants don't choose to eat heavy metals. They, work, they have to drink. So they will take them up when they're soluble. At 3.5 out here, aluminum, becomes water soluble, and that is acid rain. That's where all plants die. Um, they'll take it for 20 minutes, but that's about it. After 20 minutes, the forest will die, all trees will die. And that's what we've got from heavy industry and fossil fuels, and the large amount of car exhausts that are increasing out there, putting up sulfurs into the atmosphere, and the hydrochloric acids up into the atmosphere, and it's coming down at 3.5 here and there, and it's killing all vegetation. So we'd really, we need to understand what's going on here. And as we go out towards the caustic end, it's just as corrosive. So we need to understand the availability and the importance of elements to plants that are governed by pH. pH governs the availability of elements. So when we look at the elements in the soil, and we look at that carbon at the top, and N, P, K, and the, and the minor elements, and the trace elements, there's these a naught and minor trace elements further out. Um, we don't see pH there. Um, minor trace elements. This symbol's not there in one of the major elements of the soil. It's not actually an element, it's more of a function. And because it's a hard scale to understand, it's hard to realize exactly what is going on. If you think about it like a supermarket, like the supermarket of the soil, and you've got aisles in your supermarket, 
where most people understand this analogy, and all kinds of things are for sale in the supermarket. So this is the, the soil supermarket. And you've got all these different elements. You've got N and you've got P and you've got K and you've got Fe, which is iron, and you know Mg, which is magnesium. You've got all these different elements for sale, like the goods in the supermarket. pH would be the doors of the supermarket. And this would be pH 7. Doors are open, evidence for sale. And here, the shoppers are the plants. They're coming in with their little recycled green shopping bags to go and get what they need. Right? They're hungry for certain elements. They're coming into the soil supermarket shop. But if it goes to pH 6, this aisle closes. And if it goes to pH, I put that as 8, it should be 7. But if it goes to pH 8, this aisle closes. And if it goes to pH 9, this aisle closes. And if it goes to pH 5, this aisle closes. And at pH 4, half the shop's closed. And at pH 10, the other half of the shop is closed. So we can close half the shop. So we have to be careful what's going on. We have to understand that we might have a soil that's full of the right elements. We've got a good quality soil, but it's not available. The doors are shut. So availability is the function of pH. Now, pH affects our health and all living things. We're acid or alkali affected. Water is acid or alkali. Acid water is soft and it lathers and soaps up easily. Alkaline water is hard, doesn't lather very easily with soap. If we want to change the pH, then if we add lime here, or if we add sulfur here, then we adjust the pH. We can also add dolomite here. Yeah. They're alkaline elements. These sulfur, flowers of sulfur, is an acidifying element. We can make adjustments. So the lime and dolomite increases alkalinity. Sulfur increases acidity. The pH scale goes from well, it actually goes from 0 to 14, but I like to do 1 to 13. That makes 7 exactly in the middle. So on the acid side, you have citrus juice. On the alkaline side, you have baking soda and washing soda. There's very little life outside of 4 on the acid side and 10 on the alkaline side. Life exists in here. Not much, it's pretty hostile when you get outside of there. Rain is naturally a weak carbonic acid, which it picks up from carbon dioxide in the atmosphere as it falls. This helps dissolve metal oxides and minerals in rocks and soils into solution. It's just very slightly carbonic acid. Natural elements can for many types of acids in moderation, which help supply nutrients to plants. Your garden is best just slightly acid. Here, about 6.5. Deserts and coasts are alkaline, and new volcanisms, swamps are acid. As you lose the air in the soil, as you compact the soil, as you saturate the soil so it becomes airless and Waterlogged swamps are acid. So it's going to go acid if we compact it and saturate it. If we dry it 
and, and, and scorch it with heat, it goes salty and alkaline. So, natural elements go in different directions. We can choose the environments that we're in. We know that if we're in wetland, wet country, the saturated water is going to be acid. And we know if we're in dry lands and coasts, it's going to be alkaline. And pay attention to new vulcan volcanisms where you have volcanic ash, because ash is alkaline. But pH is never constant. And it changes in day to night. It changes in season. It changes in soil depth and many variations. We need to realize this. And also that root hairs of plants will actually try and seek out ideal pH zones. And we need to try and make those available. We can only get an average idea of the basic soil pH as a, as a sort of net balance. We want to keep our pH somewhere between six and seven. That's kind of nice and ideal, somewhere in there. Most vegetables will grow well in our gardens at six to seven. But the great thing about organic matter is as it creates humus, it breaks down with humic acid. And it's a great buffer. Calcium is also a great buffer as lime. Or if we're already alkaline, you can use gypsum, which gives you calcium without making it more alkaline again. So gypsum is it has got the calcium without the alkalizing effect. It doesn't change the pH. But where we have humus, we'll grow plants and we'll even out our pH. Humus moderates the pH. So where we get deep mulches, where we get organic matter in soils, where we add compost, or if we have to, lime gardens because they're a little bit acid, will really show plant deficiency symptoms. So mulching, composting, building organic matter in gardens, that is what will give us the buffer. And that'll stop any of these toxic uptakes, any of this heavy metal. It's the breakdown of carbon, the in inclusion of carbon decomposition, the creation of organic soils and organic matter in soils. That's what we have to concentrate on. And that's how the natural system works. And we can always find buffered pH where there's extra organic matter additions to soils.